Hello, I am Jonas from VHDelgus.com. I am making this video today because I want to talk to you about how you can split a large VHDL module into multiple modules. For example, if you have a VHDL file that contains many processes like a test bench, how can you take one process and move it to a different file without affecting the logic and functionality of your design? If you have been doing VHDL for any amount of time, you at least should know one way. I'm going to show you two ways, but the first way is the port map and instantiation method. And for completeness and for the newbies that are watching this video, I'm going to show it anyway. So here's the demo project, a simple test bench containing a clock generator process and two other processes, PROC A and PROC B. And both of the processes react to the rising edge of the clock and then print hello from PROC A and hello from PROC B so that we can differentiate them in the simulator console. So let's go ahead and compile and run this. I've already loaded it into MOLSIM. So we see here the output. I just ran for 100 nanoseconds and every 10 nanoseconds on the rising edge of the clock, it prints hello from PROC A and hello from PROC B. So that worked well, very simple. Let's see if we can move PROC B to a different file. We're going to go ahead and cut this from the main test bench, cut PROC B, and then create a new file, save it as module underscore B dot VHD, and then use the VHDL snippet to create the outline for this module. Module B is the name. Let's use architecture RTL. And then we have to define the port signals, the signals that are coming into and going out from this module. And in this case, it's only going to be a single signal, the clock as an input. And then we're going to paste in the process that I copied like this. So now we have the clock coming into this module and the process that is reacting to the clock. So we can save this file now and we have to import module B in the main test bench. And we can do that by instantiating it. When we import the module, we are instantiating it, creating an instance in the other module. We can easily do that by typing instance B, for example. So I'm giving it the name instance B and using entity instantiation method from the work library. And the module name was module underscore B. Architecture was RTL. And then we have to map the signals to local signals. So we have to do a port map of the signals in the entity to a local signal. And in this case, it was a single signal. We are mapping the clock signal from the entity of module B here to a clock signal in this test bench in the local file here, this one clock signal. So now we have done all the work. We have created the module and instantiated it and we can save this file. I'm going to go to Molesim and import a new file by right clicking in the project window, selecting add to project existing file, and then selecting module B like this. We have to compile module B first now and compile the main test bench and rerun the simulation. And we can now see it has the same behavior. Proc A, proc B reports hello. And that is how easy it is to create a new module in VHDL and import it into another module. You should always use that method when you're dealing with RTL code. And that means synthesizable code that is going onto the FPGA. But there is a different method. And I only recommend this one, which I'm going to show now for test benches. We can skip this port map for test bench modules. We can simply delete it like this so that I'm not specifying which signals map to which other signals. And then I'm going to go to the module here and delete the port so that it has an empty entity, just like the main test bench file. So how can we get access to this clock signal from this sub module? Well, we can move it to a package. I'm going to cut the signal here and then create a new file, save it as, for example, my package VHD, and then create the new package outline. This is the declarative region, the public region of the package, and this is the private hidden region, the implementation region. I'm going to delete the body, the package body, and paste in my signal in the declarative region. We're only going to use that one. 
and we have to give it a name my package for example same as the file name and because this is a standard logic we have to import the ieee library here standard logic i'm just going to grab it from the other file import it in the head of the package so now we are complete with this package i'm going to save the package but we have to import it into the two modules first the module that we created we can do that by typing use work dot my underscore package dot all so now we are importing from the work library that's the default library this package and everything that is declared in that package and that is in this case only the clock signal so now we have access to the clock signal but we also have to do the same in the main test bench because we removed the clock from the main test bench file and placed it in the package. So let's save this file, save the other file here, and go to Molsim and add the package now. I'm going to add the package to our project like this. We can compile the package first now and then compile the module and finally compile the main test bench and rerun. So let's see if that works. And it did exactly the same output, hello from proc A, hello from proc B. So you see it didn't make any difference. And that's the other way to split processes over multiple VHDL files. Instead of going through the entity, we declared the signals that both processes depend on in a package. And then we imported this package into both modules. And some people refer to this as global signals. I wouldn't say that it's exactly global because the signal is not automatically visible to every module in your design. You have to import the package into the module to use it. But still, I recommend not using this method for RTL design. So if you're creating a module that's supposed to go on the FPGA, stick with the older usual method of uh, going through the entity and the port map. Don't use a signal in a package. And I think synthesis tools like Vivado don't even support it. And that's for a good reason. It's a bad design practice. It breaks the mapping between your VHDL code and the physical netlist if you go outside of the entity. You should not use it for RTL design, but for test benches, on the other hand, it's very useful because the test bench doesn't describe any circuit. It's just like a program for verifying your device in the test. So we can use these kind of tricks to simplify and shorten your test bench files. And that is why VHDL frameworks like UVVM, they use this trick signal in the package to coordinate between the main test bench and different modules that belong to the test bench. And in the next tutorial series in the VHDL with membership, we are going to do exactly this. I have created a tutorial series where we take a self-checking test bench and move out the bit level logic into different modules. We place the instances in a different module called the harness and i borrowed that expression from uvvm they also use this harness to store the the uh, instances and then we place the checker processes in a second vhdl module and then finally executor processes in a third vhdl module so that the main test bench file only contains transaction based logic like uh, send this byte or expect that output from the device in the test and all of the bit level stuff is hidden in different files and then we use signal in the package to communicate between the main test bench and the other modules the other modules belonging to the test bench and we cr create um, a, a command interface a common command interface for using a signal of a record type so that we can start the executor processes and tell them what to do. So there are executor processes in a different VHDL module. And then we use procedure calls in the main sequence process in the main test bench file to kick off these executor processes to start sending bytes and doing stuff that we normally would do in the main test bench. And that is very useful if you have a large design, you can structure your test bench and have transaction-based logic in the main test bench and bit level logic elsewhere. So that's what we're going to do in the next month in the VHDL with membership. If you're interested in joining the VHDL with membership, it's going to open for new members on November 1st, 2021, and it's going to stay open for one week. 
and I'm going to leave a link to the sales page below so you, you can uh, click it and view more if you're interested. And don't forget the most important thing of all, keep coding.